Good morning, folks. It's a holiday in the U.S., and we will show what we're thankful for today. Sadly, we'll hit some more somber news as well, but we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the Earth-facing half devoid of sunspots once again. We do see some dark patches incoming, and we'll discuss those momentarily with a better look. But let's come first to the solar wind. We begin to see a drop in stream intensity. And this coronal hole event couldn't even crack 500 kilometers per second in the speed telemetry, and that is why the fairly enduring impact has not produced more than the slightest geomagnetic action. We're in the green. Looking in 211 angstroms to better pick out the coronal holes, it appears we do have both north and south polar extensions reaching for the equator. Earth is magnetically connecting, and the earthquake watch rises fast towards the weekend. Let's kick off weather with one of the famous black sand beaches of Auckland, peppered white with hail from the same line of weather driving the dust storms back in Australia you saw from yesterday's show. Of course, precipitation in the Middle East has been unheard of recently. Following their fourth major hailstorm this month, the hot, dry, and ultra-flat desert of Saudi Arabia is largely flooded, as far as the eye can see. You'll hopefully recall, this region is somehow stealing all of the rain that should be making it up into the highlands to the northeast, Afghanistan missing that rain, already seeing a drought-driven migration of 3.5 million people, and the absolute worst of fates has become the only survival option for some. Let's go to the science. Trappist is back in play. The seven-planet Jupiter-like solar system has been the subject of nearly constant study since its discovery, with the water lines of steam, liquid, and snow becoming more defined. And after scientists initially thought D, E, F, and G could potentially be Earth-like, they are now squarely focused on E. Inside of that, it's too hot, they say, and just a bit too cold beyond. I would, however, like to remind everyone that disregarding Earth analogs and instead seeking even extremophile microbial life, it's hard not to love the ice world H. Likely tons of water, likely an ice shell on top, and we've seen most every ice shell moon in our solar system have a subsurface ocean, and those get extra protection from space energy. Up next, we're finding ALMA, discovering some simple and yet astounding features in a heavy star formation region. Using their highest frequency search to date, they notice simple sugars in the molecular cloud and water fountains emanating from the formation zones, water, sugar, and sunlight. Up next, we're seeing what's been dubbed the Tadpole Galaxy. They say a major interaction tugged and flung out a tail from one of the clusters, and that these interactions should continue over cosmic timescales to produce vastly more complex imagery. Let's set up our thankful story with one bumping up the Earth-like planet population in the Milky Way by 10 to 20 percent. Turns out it's likely that we've underestimated the number of Earth-like planets in our home galaxy. Now let's spin that into Loeb's latest. I am thankful that when this Harvard professor's artificial satellite hypothesis was disregarded by many colleagues in the field, he doubled down and in a way that high school students could probably understand proceeds to nail them all to the wall. Folks, if Oumuamua is not an artificial spacecraft, it not only managed to speed up after close approach to the sun, which physics doesn't exactly like, it would have to be the most extremely shaped asteroid in the history of human observations. It somehow managed to be moving relative to our local standard of rest as a solar system and universal stellar motion, which is just about impossible, and not a single bit of heat or outgassing was seen from the object. Furthermore, such an object would almost certainly not survive the long trip through space without being designed to do so. He quotes Sherlock Holmes' adage about all other possibilities disappearing, and as scientific as I like to be, I have to admit, the only explanation I cannot thoroughly debunk right now is aliens. We greatly appreciate your support. Our latest children's book is in, and we are getting them out to you. All our books make great holiday gifts, by the way. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.